Hello and welcome to uh, what's just going to be a very short update on the Skywatcher uh, 72ED. As I'm sure most of you have been aware, the uh, the cloud gods have conspired against us lately, so I've, I've not had any opportunity at all to get out with a telescope and do any um, serious testing. So what I've done in the meantime is I've ordered um, a 2 inch fill flattener, the OVO fill flattener from uh, First Light Optics and that's come today. So I'll, I'll put a link to this particular fill flattener in the the, uh, the description below. So if you want to order that one from First Light Optics you can get that exact one. Um, the reason I've chose this one is at the moment it's really the only one or the best one that's available for this particular telescope. Skywatcher are bringing out a matched fill flattener for this particular OTA uh, but that's not going to be available until later in the year I think in the summertime. That obviously is going to be ideal because you, you'll have a fixed back focus distance. Uh, it's possibly going to be screw fit if First Light Optics makes some uh, custom adapters but if not then the push fit will work fine but it, it will be matched for this telescope. I'm not sure what the price of that is going to be yet um, certainly in relation to the, uh, the OVL one but uh, I'm hoping it will be comparable. But in the meantime, this is pretty much the, the standard one that, that you're going to have to use for this particular telescope. Um, so we'll just do a quick open up so you can see what this fill flattener is like. I mean, I think it's very similar in a way to the, um, the William Optics ones. Um, I have a William Optics one and it is it certainly... As far as looks go, it's, uh, it's actually very similar. Um, so what we've got here, here we are. This is the fill flattener. Uh, it's got a lens cap, both ends. One's plastic, this end, and this one's a, a screw fit metal one. Now this, as you can see, is a two inch push fit, which is great for this scope because it's we don't have a screw fit adapter yet. Um, it's got a screw thread on the inside for a 2 inch filter and what's quite nice about this as well, like the William Optics one, is it has the, the collar on the, uh, the nose piece which is great. So when it goes in to the end of the focus tube it sits nice and secure. That actually does tighten up really nicely and that's just with a, a gentle touch on there. So that's really good. I'm quite happy with that. Now the one thing that um, I wasn't sure whether you would be able to do with this, which I can with my William Optics one, and I'm actually glad that you can, is you can take the nose piece off. And that then gives you uh, what I suspect is an M54 thread. Uh, so it gives you options then to have a fully uh, screwed imaging train, which is what my preference is. Uh, so that's great for the future. I mean, at the moment, we still don't have any custom adapters to make this fully screw fitted, but I believe uh, First Light Optics are working on having some custom ones made, so that will be great. Uh, the other end is a standard T2 adapter to go into your um, your camera adapters or, or your filter wheel, whatever that's going to be. This does unscrew, this, this adapter at the end here does unscrew and then it gives you a mail thread on the outside but um, all the measurements that I will take in this little test that I'll be doing will be from the mating surface of the T2 screw thread. Um, the reason for that is that at least we can be consistent if I'm putting in one or one and a half mil with Delrin spacers uh, at least you know exactly where that's from then. Um, the reason I'm doing this little experiment with this fill flattener is that um, it's not a reducer, it's just a flattener by the way. It, there's no um, focal length reduction at all. It is, it is just a, a fill flattener. And it's actually designed to work with anything between f5.5 and f6. Now obviously this OTA is f5.8. So I suspect we're not going to have exactly 55mm, there's going to be a little bit of experimentation uh, back and forth with regards to spacing. Um, one of the members of SGL has actually tried it with his DSLR and, and the spacing was slightly out, he needs to add some Delrin spacers in. So uh, we know it's not going to be exactly 55mm, you're not just going to be able to screw a, like a Canon T adapter on there and, and it'll be perfect. So uh, that's the idea, is to just let you know 
how many spaces, how much spacing we're going to need to get the, the field nice and flat. So what I'm going to do is we're, we're scheduled to have some uh, reasonable weather, I believe, clear skies, uh, I think Wednesday of this week. So uh, it's quite nice that this has arrived now. So I'm going to get this all set up and, and spaced out how I think it's going to be and uh, run some tests. So hopefully later in the week I'll be able to give you a little update on this video uh, to let you know how well this um, this field flattener actually works in this scope. Um, you know, it may be worth hanging on for the, the Skywasher 1, but obviously if that doesn't come till much later in, in the summer, for example, then there's a lot of imaging time lost. So uh, I'll give this a go and I'll report back later in a week and um, give you a, an update on its performance. Uh, I will speak to you soon. Okay, bye.